Hello and welcome to my SEO Power Suite review where I'm going to be giving you a features demo, talking about the pros and cons, and answering the question, is SEO Power Suite worth it? Before we continue, I do want to let you know that they come along with free access, so I will leave a link down below. And if you click that, you can check them out, test them out for yourself, and if always you need to, you can upgrade from there. So let's begin. So SEO Power Suite comes with a suite of tools. There's going to be four of them most specifically. The first one I'm going to be talking about here is Link Assistant, and this is going to be great when it comes to finding many backlinks that you can not only go after, but also find prospects, reach out to them, send them an email, and then go from there. In fact, you can do this all within SEO Power Suite if you want. It's really going to be up to you. The big benefits when it comes to a Link Assistant is, of course, finding links that you can go out and get. Here are going to be some of the main features that you can use when utilizing Link Assistant. You have guest posting for finding the top 100 blogs. This is what I'm going to be showing you an example of. We have reviews for the top 100 sources. You can find top ranking pages, similar websites, backlink gaps, competitors' new backlinks, and of course, expert mode when it comes to creating your own custom search queries. So here we are with guest posts where you can utilize this to find them. And what I did is sort by the traffic. So if I scroll up a little bit, you're going to see the traffic right here gets lower and lower. So I like finding websites that have at least a decent amount of traffic, usually at least a thousand. And then of course, up from there, you'll notice as you keep going that they get much bigger and bigger and bigger. If you are looking to find some guest posts, keep in mind, depending on where your website is, you usually want to stick with one that's right around your range as you might have a little bit more difficulty when it comes to doing outreach, especially if you're not a known expert. Something great about this as well is that you'll notice some of these are going to have a green at sign right here, like this one doesn't, but this one does. What this means is that it already has the contact emails for you, so it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to reaching out to them. Of course, you can do this inside if you like. If we go on over to email, there's going to be a settings section where if you follow through these specific steps here, you can send your emails from inside here if you want. Of course, if you don't want it, you can always utilize a separate email platform, Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, business email, whatever it's going to be, right? Of course. From there, we can go on over to prospects, excuse me, to search for prospects and say if we did find one, oh, let me click off here. What we can do is just simply right click, move to prospects, and there we go. As I talked about in my one of my previous tutorials, what you can also do is edit your anchor text. So if you happen to reach out to them, you get a specific backlink, you can actually verify that it's going to be there. First and foremost, what we need to do, we can go to preferences, we can do to prospect management, and of course, anchor settings. Let's say you were going to get a link and the first one you got was a backlink that said the best review. Okay, maybe this was your anchor text. Let's click on okay. Let's click on okay here. From there, what we can do is right click right here and we can do, where is it? Change anchor text. You'll notice how we have this specific one right there. Let's highlight that. Let's click on it. And now what we can do is double click this. It'll show up on the right side. And if you'll notice, here it is the best review. We can also verify it. Of course, it's not going to verify it because I didn't get one from it. But this is a great way how you can keep adding prospects to it once you reach out to them, update it, add your backlink, verify it, and go from there. So kind of makes getting links a whole lot easier thanks to Link Assistant. Not only will it find the prospects for you, but you can reach out, negotiate, go from there, verify it, repeat, rinse, repeat, and continue on. I think you get the idea, right? So that's the Link Assistant overall. Let's take a look at the next software that comes along with it. So here we have our SEO Spyglass. So this is great when it comes to backlink profiles. I'm going to just pick on myself. I have imnights.com right here. So say, for example, you want to reach out to someone. Maybe you want to check how their website is doing. You want to see their backlink profile. In all honesty, I think mine looks decent. You know, it doesn't show, you know, like uh, a million backlinks from, you know, five domains or something, you know, kind of fishy like that. Sometimes you're going to want to be looking for the backlink growth. How's it doing? Has it been going up and down too much? Is it going straight downhill? Are a lot of uh, backlinks being removed? Maybe they were fishy in the first place. That type of thing. There's also going to be some more backlink aspects right here. We can see them specifically ranked by the domain inc in link rank. Okay, so the higher overall is going to be the better. We're gonna have just the basic linking domains here. If you want to look at anchor text, of course, the reason why there's so many of those, it's probably just spam, which just get disavowed, but you know, they will show up there either way. But that's always a good thing. You want to make sure that the, there's some good diversity when it comes to anchor text. I know that's going to be hard sometimes to filter because like I said, a lot of people just get a lot of spam sent to the site. It happens, but just if that happens to you, make sure you disavow it. We have our linked pages. We have some referral traffic penalty risk in case you get a specific maybe uh, domain that's being linked and you want to get rid of it. Everything here looks pretty solid. 
solid, but that's also something that you can look into yourself. If And I changed it up for just three months just so it wouldn't take too long, you know, for loading it. So some of this, like share this, this looks like it's going to be some spam, but we have some other good ones. So not only am I, I'm looking at my website, but if you were going to put a competitors in there, you can take a look at some of the juiciest ones, some of the best ones. You can load them up, open them up, see how they look. Maybe perhaps you can reach out to them as well, see if you can get some links and so on and so forth. So overall, we also have our domain strength. Not a whole lot going on here, just kind of showing you where some of the indexing is going on back links, linking domains. This is just a good idea to kind of check a domain. Like I said, if you want to get a link from them, overall SEO Spyglass is going to be all about your backlink profiles. Check them out, see where the links are coming from. How are they doing? Are they a solid website? How long have they been up for? How have their how has their backlink profile looked? You get a lot of good data here that you can utilize, especially if you want to get a backlink from a specific website itself. All right, up next, we have our website auditor. This is going to be another specific tool that you can utilize with SEO PowerSuite. This is going to be great for getting a lot of quick wins and of course making changes to your pages so that you can rank higher with specific articles. For this, it's going to talk about some of the warnings, errors, and information that you can change around in terms of what's going on with your website. Keep in mind that not all of these are going to be A-OK, -okay, super 100% perfect. I understand that's going to happen with all SEO tools. But as an example, we have our broken links here. And I've noticed that a lot of these say the broken just simply. I think it's because I'm using a WP pretty link. So not all of these mean you have to change them around. As long as you can go in there, say, click on the specific link and it goes to where it's supposed to go. I think you're going to be good to go, in my opinion. Other aspects, say like pages with excessive number of links, I could certainly see why there's definitely a lot of internal links in there. It'll give you some information and it says this is just one of those factors relating to links on your website. To make sure your linking is totally fine, you should also check your website for broken links and so on and so forth. So not everything needs to be changed around. They will give you some recommendations or just point something out where, hey, maybe you have too many links here. Maybe you want to change it around. Here's another good one for a quick win. Say you have some links and it's do follow and you want to change it to no follow. Follow. That's the cool thing. It'll tell you about it, what it means, and maybe why you should change it or how you should change it. And just another great way of being able to change some things around. Here's another one that I agreed with right off the bat where the pages are way too big. I agree. One's 5.2 megabytes. The other is 3.7. These reviews are super long. So there's a lot of pages, a lot going on. That is something you can change around. But as I talked about in another video I did, is that if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. For example, if you have a page, you're ranking high and maybe you're a little bit bigger in terms of the size. Yes, you can trim it down. But for me personally, when I'm ranking well, I don't like making too many changes unless I need to, to get up higher in Google. Aside from that, if you want to go from page to page and edit things around, you can, and that's always a good thing. For this, I put in Tube Atlas Review, and it'll talk about and compare some of the audit stuff that I can go in and change. A lot of this looks great. We can even do a content audit where what it'll do is talk about how many words you have compared to some of the competitors when it's ranking for this specific keyword. For example, most competitors have around 950 to 3600 words. We seem to be in a great ballpark position for this. Even better, what we can utilize is the content editor. This is fantastic. I love specific features like this. It's kind of like gamification in my opinion, where even if you're going to create a new article or you have one you want to optimize, you get to go through and look at some of the recommended keywords that you want to add. As you can see, I have a lot of them. There's only a few here that I don't have. I believe I'm ranked number one or two, but so like I wouldn't really change that around unless it was needed. Or for example, if the optimization was rate was much lower and it was ranked not as great, then I would go around and change that. There's plenty of different features and tools when it comes to the website auditor, but this is all about getting quick wins. Or maybe if you want to take a little longer and go through each specific aspect of your website, for example, if you have broken links and you know they're going to nowhere, you got to change that fast because it's going to allow you to save on some traffic instead of going nowhere. You know, the website traffic or the people are like, hey, this is broken. They bounce, they exit, they leave. No more leads, no more sales and so on and so forth. So this specific section, a lot of great ways to get quick wins. And that's something I like, whether it's page by page or just overall when it comes to your website. Speaking of overall, they have a site structure, which is pretty cool where you can visualize what it looks like. Aside from fireworks, in my opinion, you have your homepage and you can see where all of your articles and everything is going to be going based upon where they are, how they're connected and so on and so forth. There are going to be some ways we can change this around, whether maybe it's a broken URL or a few other aspects where you can click on it, dig deeper, see how it works. And I know a lot of people, especially SEOs, love seeing kind of the visualization aspect, especially if you're just creating a website and you're creating your silos. This is kind of a separate way of doing that to see how everything flows, how it works, and of course, where you can make some changes.
Last but not least, we have our rank tracker. And here is something great that I first want to bring up. Initially, when you go ahead and add your domain, it's not going to give you all of your ranking keywords. It'll give you a few. You can always add more as well. But as I bring this up, when I talk about the pricing more, even with the free plan, you get unlimited keywords to track. And that is something very beneficial. It's kind of rare to even see that nowadays. And I just wanted to highlight that because that's a very big aspect of this because I know a lot of SEOs want keyword tracking. And then there you go. You have it there. So I just wanted to bring that up when it comes to this. Aside from being able to track keywords, ranking summaries, and keyword maps, there's going to be the keyword research aspect, which I'm sure you're really going to love, especially one of these specific features in particular. Yes, you have keyword gaps, search consoles, keyword planners, but it's the autocomplete tools that I really love here. This is going to be great for finding some good ideas, not only in Google and a few others, but even YouTube as well. As it says, generate new keyword ideas by collecting autocomplete suggestions from the most popular search engines and online services. Why do I like this so much? Well, because one, it's going to automate it for you. It's going to gather all of your data and you don't have to go in and do it yourself. You can actually build complete websites and YouTube channels based upon the autocomplete section because it will go in and extract what people are searching for. And you know that when they're searching for it, there's going to be traffic for it. So allow me to give you an example by typing in a keyword that we can use for autocomplete. All right, so I just put beginner lifting and then search. What, or excuse me, now I want to hit search. So what it's going to do is going to find some keywords. It found 158. Keep in mind, it's going to take a little bit of time, not a whole lot here. Usually once you hit search or find or go, it'll have a section here where it loads. Once this is done, I will get back to you and I will talk a little bit about this. Okay, so we have 158 keywords that were found, number of searches, expected visits, competition, cost per click, and of course, keyword difficulty. Keep in mind, just like many of our other SEO softwares that I've used before, is that these are gonna kind of be ballpark, okay? So competition and keyword difficulty, some might be low and they will be very easier to rank for. Some will still say low and it'll be a little bit more difficult. It also really depends on who's going to be in the top 10, how big of an authority are, how much they're really focusing on a specific keyword and so on and so forth. With. Nevertheless, this is going to save you a lot of time by entering a specific seed keyword. For this, I put beginning lifting. Okay, so beginning rower workout, beginner CrossFit workout. As you can see, let's say I had a sports blog when I was talking about beginners and lifting and working out. These are going to be a lot of different keywords that I might not have thought of. However, people are searching for them, so we know that there's going to be traffic for them. I have built entire websites utilizing this strategy, especially when it comes to answering questions, uh, very long tail keywords like this, even longer, but it's a great strategy that I like because I know it's going to save a lot of time and so on and so forth. We can go through, we can check them out. If there's anything specific that we like, like beginner lifting tips, this says low, but it might be a little bit more challenging. What we can do, oops, I meant to uh, just show you that we can stop tracking that. But what I can do is I can hover over this. I can click on the plus and start tracking positions. If you want, you can right click on it. You can stop ranking it. You can move it to a groove. You can add a tag. You can do a lot of cool things with this when it comes to overall the not only just the rank tracker itself, but just saving it overall so that you know that you want to create an article for it and so on and so forth. OK, what I'm also going to do, let's just say we want to go to YouTube. I'm going to change this around. And since I'm on sports and lifting and exercise overall, let's just do golf swing four. I have it on YouTube. Let's do the search button. And once again, it's going to take a little time for it to find the keywords. We found many more this time, 294. I will be back when they are all set. All right, so here we are again. This time we have 294 keywords. And if you're looking for keyword suggestions, keyword research, this is going to be a great way just to get so many of them. This is going to be for YouTube specifically. But as you can see, a lot of them have like golf swing fours. Not all of them are going to have the exact words, but these are going to be some good ideas that you can utilize. For example, golf swing drills for beginners. Competition is going to be low. Obviously, this will be a little bit different for YouTube, but compared to Google, right? But scrolling down, there's just so many that you can utilize. What I would recommend if you find one, take it, type it in, put it in YouTube, see if anyone's even optimizing for that keyword. If no one is, it's going to have a much higher time ranking for it. And that's something similar that you can do with Google as well. If people aren't creating articles for specific keywords, probably a good sign that you might want to, especially if you know that people are searching for them, which they are because we're using the autocomplete tool.
So those were just the four main specific tools that come along with SEO PowerSuite, and there's a lot to like, so let's quickly talk about the SEO PowerSuite pros and cons. Overall, there's only going to be a few for each, and that's a good thing, and allow me to explain. So very first, what I really like about this is first and foremost, they have a free version. This is something I love as someone who likes to demo, you know, download, utilize, and test out software for you. I love the fact that you can always test drive a specific software, use it for yourself, and then of course, when you're like, okay, this is great, I can upgrade from there. What's also great about the free aspect is going to be many of the free perks that they come along with, as you can see right here. I'm not going to highlight them right here for you. We already have the unlimited keywords to track. There's going to be a little bit limited when it comes to site crawling and auditing, and of course, backlinks tracking and link auditing, and as well as link prospecting and outreach. But nevertheless, you get a good idea of how it can work. And I think that's a really great thing. Aside from that, even if you're not utilizing the free, whether you have professional or enterprise, there are just so many features in this that it's it's hard to do a review for. So I felt I had to highlight some of my favorite ones, whether it's going to be not only tracking your keywords, but do, utilizing the keyword research, whether it's going to be link prospecting, being able to reach out to specific websites, you know, and doing that, whether it's going to be outside of SEO Power Suite or inside, it's really going to be up to you. Of course, it's auditing your website, whether it's going to be specific pages, finding errors and so on and so forth there is a lot to like with this aside from that given the fact we're also on the pricing page they have fantastic friendly pricing in my opinion when it comes to seo software most of it comes out to around say around a hundred dollars a month so when you look at the prices right here you're already getting a very good deal if you were going to compare it to some of the other seo softwares out there of course they do come with the ability to get a discount whether you're going to be using the two-year plan or the three-year plan Obviously, you can save a good amount of money that way, but with the one-year plan, pretty price efficient if you ask me, especially many of the features that come along with it. So those are a lot of the things that I really like. When it comes to the dislikes, not really dislikes, just something I want to bring up so that you're aware of them. First and foremost, this is going to be a software download. I know that there's going to be some people out there who prefer just using like something in the cloud where you can go in, log in, go from there. But keep in mind, this is something that you do need to download. As you can see, I have the four icons down here that I was utilizing that once you download them, you open them up and you're going to be good to go. Last but not least, there is also going to be a learning curve. This is kind of like the pro and the con. There's so many features that there you're, it's going to take a little while for you to learn some of them. Overall, it's not going to be too bad, but it's something I want you to keep in mind, especially for the fact that if you're going to be starting from square one, you're going to be doing a lot of your research, your backlink, your outreach, and everything like that. You might have a few things to learn, but they do come with a lot of great tutorials. And not only are they going to be video-wise, they have a lot of documentation. So not the biggest thing in the world, but those are some of the pros and cons when it comes to SEO Power Suite. And is SEO Power Suite worth using? Absolutely. Aside from the fact that they are stacked with a lot of features in their free version, upgrading, you're going to be getting even more where you can save a lot of this documentation reports. So you're not going to have to wait as long when it comes to loading because a lot of the data will already be up. And then, of course, you can save your information, continue on from there, keep building backlinks, and of course, rank higher in these search engines, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of auditing, backlink research, and of course, you can track your keywords. You can pretty much do everything that you need to when it comes to SEO Power Suite. So in my opinion, yes, SEO Power Suite is definitely worth it. You got a fantastic software here, very price friendly, and a lot of features that an SEO is definitely going to want. So that concludes my SEO Power Suite review. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I know there's so many more features in this, but hey, like I said, they come with a free plan. You can test it out yourself, formulate your own opinion. If you like what they have to offer, you can always upgrade to get much more with it. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out that link down below in the description, and I will see you in my next video.